Good evening from Bridlington Priory, where for the first time in the seven weeks or so we've been doing these six o'clock prayers, the striking of the clock has precisely coincided with my watch saying it was just arrived at six o'clock. Do please humour me about this, uh, with this preoccupation with when the clock strikes, but um, that's very pleasing and satisfying, isn't it? It struck exactly at six. It is Friday, and that means in the scheme of the things that we are using uh, to guide our prayer, we're praying this evening with particular intent for national and local government. Well, we might. Um, things seem to be in greater disarray than ever. Um, this whole debacle about schools and whether it's lawful for schools to be closed. It was going to be unlawful for them to close early for a week last week. And within 24 hours it was recommended to be closed for a week at the beginning of term and all, all this business. Um, and how this testing is going to be done in the first week of next term in high schools just remains to be seen. So we do pray for some sort of coherence and leadership coming out of government. And also it says national and local government for the relationship between the two. I don't see how there can be any relationship between national government and the area uh, which, which we live in because the area for the purposes of designating tiers of restrictions that we're in doesn't exist in any other context, does it? We realise that. Humberside disappeared in 1996, 24 years ago. So there can have been no consultation with any body about what tier that area ought to be in, because it doesn't exist. If the East Riding of Yorkshire was an area that was going to be allocated into one tier or another, there could have been consultation with the East Riding of Yorkshire Council about it, about what was appropriate. If the guiding criterion is the capacity of the hospitals, then there should have been consultation with the York and Scarborough NHS Trust, which covers us, which would have taken us into Tier 2, because Scarborough and North Yorkshire and York is in Tier 2. So we do pray for the relationship between national and local government, for there to be communication and consultation and collaboration and notice taken of what is happening at ground level. There you go, that should be our prayer, says Matthew. Um, it's the week before Christmas, we're into the, the final week before Christmas, which means that if we were um, doing sort of proper even song, a sort of fully fledged even song, and we would say the Magnificat every evening, there is an antiphon, um, a, a sort of a refrain before even song, every, uh, before Ma Magnificat every night. And during the final week, um, every refrain begins with, begins with O. Oh, um, may sound a bit like Nessa from um, Governor Stacey, um, but I don't mean it that way. Um, I mean that every anthem begins with the, the, the word or letter O, a sort of, um, a, 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 an address to somebody. So it started last night with O sapienta in the Latin, um, because every one is a, a term used to describe Jesus in these last seven days before Christmas. So it started by calling him wisdom yesterday. O oh, wisdom, O oh, sapienta, wisdom. And tonight, if we were following this, um, if we're doing it in Latin, um, it would be, O oh, Adonai, is how we would be uh, thinking about Jesus as the Lord, Adonai, Lord. Curious thing is, of course, that Adonai is in the plural. And that's because Christ represents a plural of majesty, is the suggestion. 
a plural of majesty. Um, I suppose this is the the Hebrew reluctance to address God. That's why here, you know, Yahweh, um, you can't actually address God because God is beyond the power of human expression to describe or to uh, address. Um, so it defies the logic or the, the rationale of human language. Jesus addressed by the plural Adonai, a plural of majesties. So just ponder on that as we are saying evening prayer and uh, awaiting his coming with particular intent, as I say, for national and local government and saying together in due course at Psalm 49. We'll work it together. Unless you happen to have the words in front of you, we will be saying Psalm 49. When I come to sing one of the verses to the Veni Veni tune at, uh, towards the end of, of prayer, um, after the Lord's Prayer, assuming I remember to say it, um, these are the words for us to call to mind and allow them to drop on our hearts. O come, O come, appointed one, to be God's love for everyone, to speak on God's behalf and show as much of God as need we know. Rejoice, rejoice, a fragrant oil shall soon anoint for blessed toil. Let us pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 49 Hear this, all you peoples. Listen, all you that dwell in the world, you of low or high degree, both rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will unfold my riddle with the lyre. Why should I fear in evil days, when the malice of my foes surrounds me, such as trust in their goods and glory in the abundance of their riches? For no one can indeed ransom another, or pay to God the price of deliverance. To ransom a soul is too costly. There is no price one could pay for it so that I might live for ever and never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also, with the foolish and ignorant they perish and leave their riches to others. Their tomb is their home for ever, their dwelling through all generations, though they call their lands after their own names. Those who have honour but lack understanding are like the beasts that perish. Such is the way of those who boast in themselves, the end of those who delight in their own words. Like a flock of sheep, they are destined to die. Death is their shepherd. They go down straight to the pit. Their beauty shall waste away and the land of the dead shall be their dwelling. But God shall ransom my soul, from the grasp of death he will take me. Be not afraid if some grow rich, and the glory of their house increases, for they will carry nothing away when they die, nor will their glory follow after them. 
though they count themselves happy while they live and praise you for your success, they shall enter the company of their ancestors who will never more see the light. Those who have honour but lack understanding are like the beasts that perish. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Save us from envy, God our Redeemer, and deliver us from the chains of wealth, that ransomed through your Son we may inherit the crown of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading for Advent by Evelyn Underhill. When we come to the first window at the east end of the aisle, the morning light comes through it. It is the window of the Incarnation. It brings us at once to the mingled homeliness and mystery of the Christian revelation and of our own little lives. It's full of family pictures and ideas, the birth of Christ, the shepherds and the magi, the little boy of Nazareth and the wonderful experience in the temple the long, quiet years in the carpenter's shop. There seems nothing so very supernatural about the first stage. But stand back and look. We are being shown here something profoundly significant about human life. God speaks in a son a baby son, and reverses all our pet values. He speaks in our language and shows us his secret beauty on our scale. We have got to begin not by an arrogant otherworldliness, but by a humble recognition that human things can be very holy very full of God, and that high-minded speculations about his nature need not be holy at all, that all life is engulfed in him, and he can reach out to us anywhere at any level. Let us pray. Let us pray to God who alone makes us dwell in safety. For all who are affected by coronavirus, through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, that they may make wise decisions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For doctors, nurses and medical researchers, that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Bridlington Deanery Streets of Light Prayer. 
Almighty God, your Son Jesus gives hope to an anxious world and floods our lives with the light of your love. Brighten our lives with your light. Enrich our relationships with your love and strengthen our communities with your hope. Let our streets become streets of light this Christmas and help us to spread the message of love and hope through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Collect for Advent. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty, to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. O come, O come, appointed one, to be God's love for every one, to speak on God's behalf and show as much of God as need we know. Rejoice, rejoice, a fragrant oil shall soon anoint for blessed toil. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just remember, if you want a Christingle in a bag... To make up at the Christingle service, which will be streamed live on Sunday afternoon, not on this Facebook page, but on Streets of Light Bridlington Facebook page, four o'clock on Sunday. If you want a Christingle in the bag, in a bag, Christingle in a bag, uh, to make up during that service, then they're available um, from the rectory tomorrow between 11 and 4. So if you want to come to the Priory, the house right next door against the Priory railings. It says rectory on a plaque by the door. They'll be available there uh, between 11 and 4 tomorrow, ready for us to make up together during the service on Sunday. And I'll be back here 6 o'clock tomorrow, ready for more evening prayers. So until then, good night and God bless. <laughs>